Hey everyone, welcome to my FormBot Voron Trident kit, episode 5. In this kit we're going to talk about the overall build, what I like about the FormBot kit, should you buy one, we'll go over a couple initial things you need to do to start printing, and then I'll make one more episode, which would be episode 6, and we will talk about the software what configuration changes need to be made for the actual FormBot version, what you should look for in the config, and explain a couple things. So, very th first off, should you buy a FormBot kit? And I can definitely 100% recommend it. Um, so far, I probably have 30, 35 hours of printing on this printer, and it's been flawless. There's no mechanical issues with this printer at all. I'm actually printing a part cooling fan for my other Simple Cube printer. I had no issues with any of the parts that FormBot included. Uh, I would say everything is quite nice. So if you don't want to self-source, uh, it just doesn't make sense for you, you just want to buy everything at once, that type of thing, FormBot, there's definitely nothing wrong with going a FormBot kit. I was very, very happy with this kit. Something I didn't go over in my build videos, the linear rails actually surprised me a little bit. When you take off the carriage from the linear rail, on the bottom of the rail, they're actually marked. Each rail had a marking on them, like minus 0.4 or something like that, minus one. So it seems to me that FormBot or whoever actually goes through in quality assurance checks all the rails, which is really neat. Um, so yeah, they had markings on them. They've definitely been checked before they were um, meant to be put in use. So that's really cool for sure. The wiring is really great with the exception of maybe the um, inductive probe, the Omron probe. They could have included a better uh, wiring uh, harness for that. Wasn't a big deal though. However, pretty much all the other wiring was great. Um, so far the PEI sheet that they supply is excellent. Uh, build plate is excellent. I've had no issues with anything. Um, if anyone doesn't know, again, I bought ABS Plus printed parts from Sparta 3D in Canada. So they printed all my parts for me. I've not yet put the panels on yet. I have to print one more part myself, which is the uh, filter back here, which actually has the Bowden adapter on it. So that's the first part I'm going to be printing. And then I'm going to start putting the panels on and getting this all wrapped up. I do eventually want to put the Stealth Burner tool head on here. I do want to upgrade this to Stealth Burner. One thing I hope Voron does is they update their kits so that you can choose the Fatus Rapido hot end. It's a much better hot end than the Dragon. Um, there's no real reason to include the Dragon uh, hot end with this printer. I'm hoping that they uh, upgrade to the Fatus Rapido. It's such a it's such a better um, hot end. It heats up much faster. Voron only includes a or a FormBot or only includes a 40 watt heater cartridge, not a 50 watt. So that's something to note as well. But I really hope that they uh, offer some Fatus Rapido options here. The tool heads support it. Both the afterburner and stealth burner Voron tool heads support the Rapido. So. So, what did I have to do to get this printer printing? So, the very first thing you need to do is you need to set up your Z probe numbers so that the printer knows where to move the hot end to actually hit that probe on the very back. Again, you can see that there. So, when you get this printer working, essentially what you need to do is you need to home X and Y only. So the printer will actually home back here in the corner. And then once X and Y are homed, you'll manually use the movement arrows and you'll move the tool head over and over and over and over until it's directly above that probe there. Once it's above the probe, you'll record your X and Y numbers and you'll put them in the config file. And like I said, in episode six, we will talk about that. So that's the very first thing you need to do. The printer, when it homes, it's gonna home X, it'll home Y, 
and then it automatically wants to home the Z, so it's going to go to where this probe is. Before you can home Z, you have to put those numbers in the printer first. So that's how I did mine. I homed X and Y first, and then I just moved the tool head over until it was directly above, and then I recorded those numbers. I went into the config file, I entered them in, and then I tried again, and it homed just perfectly. After that, the printer actually uh, was working well. As soon as it homes on the back here, it'll then tram the bed. It'll come over here first. It'll tram. It'll go to the back middle. It'll tram. And then it'll go up here and it'll tram. And then it will start printing. I did have some issues with the Hal Effect end stops. So the Hal Effect end stop is right there. That is what FormBot supplies. I would prefer they just use mechanical end stops, not the Hal Effect. The problem I ran into on my kit was what would happen is my printer would home like normal. It would touch the nozzle. It would tram the bed. And then when it went to home, it was actually slightly off. It wasn't repeatable for whatever reason. I don't know why. When the tool head was over here and it went back and tried to home, it was always off. I could never rehome it back onto here. It was very, very weird. So I had to modify my config file a little bit. So what my printer basically does is it homes X and Y. It'll go over home Z. It'll tram and then it starts printing automatically. It doesn't rehome the printer. I don't know why you would rehome again after tramming. So I did change that on my config file and I'll go over that too. Um, when I talk about the uh, config, clipper config for this printer, but yeah, so to wrap this up, again, I do recommend a FormBot kit. Uh, two things that they could maybe improve are just going with the standard mechanical end stops, that'd be really nice. And I hope that they upgrade the hot end choices to give the Fadus Rapido uh, as an option. And hopefully, they take away the E3D V6. That, that hot end is ancient. There's no reason. No one should be building this printer with an E3D V6. There's absolutely no point. The print, that hot end is archaic. Choose the Dragon, or hopefully uh, they'll supply a Fadus Rapido. And there you can see this is printing PETG, and the uh, print quality actually is very good on this printer. I'm, I'm very happy with it, so. If anyone has any questions, please comment below. I really appreciate all the new subscribers. We're over 400 now, which is just amazing. Um, look out for episode 6. Like I say, we'll talk about the actual Clipper config. I do have on my channel a Clipper how-to install as well. So you can follow that for anyone who's interested in how to install Clipper. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.